A particle P moves on a path that runs north-south through an origin O. Its displacement, y meters north of O, at time t is given by y is equal to minus 1.2t squared plus 6t, for t being between 0 and 8. It says a, determine the direction in which p is moving when t is equal to 4, and then find the furthest distance from O reached by p for t being between 0 and 8. Right, if we now first of all look at this GeoGebra app, and the GeoGebra app, I will put the link in the notes of this video. Okay, so here we have a particle P, which is going to move in a north-south direction, which passes through the origin. So we've got the time starting here from zero, so we'll just have a look at, at its motion. So if we look at its motion, and it's only going to move up in this direction, we can see that it moves up, reaches the maximum point there, and then moves back down again. And it moves down until it gets right down here. So that's the motion again. Let's just have another quick look. So it starts, gets up to there, and then moves down again, back through the origin, and then moves in the opposite direction. Okay, so what we want to do is to find what happens to the motion when uh, t is equal to 4. Okay, so if we click this here, what we've got here, this is a graph of its sort of motion. Okay, although it's moving up and down in this direction, this is a graph in its motion. So if we just press the start again, we'll see. It goes up, hits this maximum point here, and then comes back down again, and it will stop here. So we can actually see the answer to the second question here. The maximum distance from, from O is going to be this point here, from here to here. However, of course, we don't have, in an examination, the advantages of some sort of GeoGebra app. So let's just have a look at it. So when t is equal to 4, which is uh, there, we can definitely see that the particle is moving back downwards. But how can we show that using just algebra? So let's go back to the problem. OK, so if we've got y is equal to minus 1.2t squared plus 6t, if we want to find the velocity, because this is a displacement, then we need to differentiate that. So it's going to be dy by dt. So if we differentiate that, so it's going to be 2 times minus 2.4, 1.4 which gives me minus 2.4t reduce the power by 1 and then plus just 6 okay when t is equal to 4 then the velocity will be minus 2.4 times 4 plus 6 which gives me minus 3.6 meters per second minus 1 but the important thing here is the minus sign so the velocity is in the, uh, in the negative direction. So as the velocity is negative, the particle is moving towards south. OK, if we just go back and look at the GeoGebra again, trying to relate it all together, just reset that. If we start it here, we can see that t gets to one point thing, and now it's starting to move back down. So t is 4, which we just passed. It was definitely more moving towards the southerly direction. And we know that because the velocity has changed. Let me just put that back there. And if we look at the tangent when t is 4, if we look at the tangent at that particular point, it's going to be a negative tangent. So we know that the velocity will be negative and it's moving back in the southerly direction. OK, so now what we've got to do for the second part, we've got to find the greatest distance. Now, of course, we don't have the advantages of this GeoGebra app. So basically what we need to do is find how far north it goes, how far north it goes will be up to this point here, and then how far south it's going to go. So we need to, we know uh, when uh, t is zero, just because we know the function, that it will still be at the origin, so it won't have gone anywhere. So we won't need to consider that point. So we'll need to consider this point here, and this point here, at this particular point, uh, and see which is the greatest of the two. So we need to show that algebraically. Okay, so to do that, so the greatest distance that the P moves in the north direction is going to be given by 
dy by d x dt sorry is equal to zero because that's uh, as it goes up and stops and then comes back down again the velocity will be zero so we can find that point by just uh, finding the, the velocity equal to zero so take the velocity which is this minus 2.4 t plus 6 I'll put it equal to zero and then rearrange that 2.4 t is equal to 6 t will be equal to 2.6 divided by 2.4 which is 2.5 seconds okay so this point here you can find it is 2. Point, we probably won't be able to get it exactly but we'll try okay it's a bit difficult to get it exact Okay, it's about there. This point here, and there we go, we've got it exactly there. This point here is where the velocity is equal to zero. We can see if we draw a tangent there, the, uh, the velocity would be equal to zero. Okay, so we now take that value of t and put it in our distance. So y, so we we'll put it back in this one, so y will be minus 1.2 times 2.5 squared, t squared, plus 6 times 2.5 and we bash that out on our calculator so we're going to get 7.5 meters okay so the distance moved in this direction is going to be 7.5 meters it happens when t is 2.5 okay right but we also need to consider the end point here what happens at the end point here is this distance here greater than this distance here if so that this is the greatest distance so we, however, we must check the y when t is equal to 8 seconds. So the end point, when 0 is t, we don't need to do the 0 end point because we know at 0 the particles at the origin. So y will be equal to minus 1.28 squared plus 6 times 8, which gives me minus 28.8 metres. Now, obviously, that's bigger than the 7.5 that we found in the first part. And therefore, the greatest distance from O that the particle will reach will be 28.8 metres. Notice we don't put minus 28.8 metres because distance is a scalar quantity. It has no sign. All right. OK. And if we just, just go back one last time to look at the motion. Again, you can do this yourself. OK, so the motion is, so obviously it's moving in this direction only. This is just a curve to help us uh, analyse the motion. So the particle goes up, hits a point, and then goes back down again till it gets to about this point down here where it will stop because we're at the end of our time. OK, I hope you've understood. Uh, this has been a video to show you how to find a, the greatest distance from, uh, dis distance from a point. Uh, fixed point called the origin. I hope you've understood and I thank you very much for watching.